Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and well guess what, in this video we're once again going back to Powehi, the ultra massive black hole in the middle of M87 galaxy. So in this video what I wanted to do is really talk about how ridiculous this black hole is in terms of the actual mass and size that even a simulation like Space Engine can't actually handle it. So first of all, what I wanted to do here, and this is me just trying to play around with the actual settings, I was trying to create the image that we saw um, and kind of maybe try to recreate what we actually detected. But I found it a little bit challenging, mostly because Space Engine is not perfect. And first of all, it doesn't allow me to blur images because this is a little bit too sharp. Um, and second of all, even here, the actual size and the mass of this black hole is not actually enough. It's not correctly represented. So let's actually start from scratch here. And what we're going to do is use the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy to try to create something similar to this. In other words, an ultramassive black hole. And hopefully this will help you understand how absolutely ridiculous this M87 is. So let's jump back to our own galaxy and try to find the Sagittarius A star, which is somewhere in the middle of this globular cluster. And the easiest way to do this is by just selecting it directly and jumping to it. So here is what it looks like simulated in Space Engine. Um, and it's actually really beautiful and it's relatively realistic looking. With the only exception maybe being that uh, this one seems to have these astrophysical jets and we're not entirely sure that our supermassive black hole actually has them. To edit any object in Space Engine, you just have to press Shift and F2 and it will bring up this panel where you can actually modify pretty much everything. And so what I wanted to do um, before I started this video is I wanted to physically recreate M87, Poehi. I wanted to create something as big and as massive and as powerful as that particular black hole. And guess what? When I tried to do that in Space Engine, there were just not enough numbers in the game to create anything like it. Let me demonstrate this. Let's actually maybe move back a little bit. We need to start by giving this black hole a lot more mass. Now, right now, this is about 4.1, I believe, million masses of the sun. The M87 black hole is approximately um, 1,500 times more, so that's about six and a half billion masses of the sun. But this is where we hit our first problem. If you increase the mass to the maximum, which is this, you only get roughly um, one billion masses. And that's already not enough. That's um, six and a half times less than Poehi. So the game just doesn't have the ability to create such a tremendously large black hole. However, on the other hand, we can also try to increase the radius of the accretion disk here, making it very, very large. So let's maybe increase this to the limit. And it becomes approximately 0.32 light years in radius. So the size of this black hole and the size of the accretion disk, as you can see, is dramatically bigger than it was before, um, is relatively similar to the real thing but the mass is way smaller and um, the radius is still kind of about 20% smaller. The real size of this disk is uh, roughly about 0.4 light years. This is about 0.32. And the radius of the actual black hole itself, um, or I guess the radius from the center to the event horizon, is roughly about, uh, this says 134 astronomical units, whereas in reality it's approximately 140. So it's a little bit smaller in size, it's much smaller in mass, but that's as high as it goes in Space Engine. So even this simulation, even this incredible tool is unable to create something as realistic as M87. This is the maximum we can create. But the actual size here is really overwhelming. Um, right before we came here, um, there was a really large globular cluster. And this globular cluster is, I think, several light years across. But as you can see, uh, the black hole is right in the middle of it and very, very easily visible. So this humongous monster in the middle is just really, really extreme. And remember, this is not even the full size yet. It's still a little bit bigger in real life. 
we were able to see this from a really far away distance as well. The actual distance was approximately 56 million light years. But even though it's so far away, we can still see all of the effects that this black hole is creating, such as, for example, swallowing 90 masses of Earth per day and producing ridiculous amounts of energy that's then visible from planet Earth. And so that's kind of what we were able to observe. We were able to observe all of this energy that's um, generated by the accretion disk and is then visible from as far away as our planet. Now, although technically we could probably see this from here, from planet Earth, if we were to zoom into the central region and then try to look really, really hard for that black hole, unfortunately Space Engine is not really good enough um, at producing images that are that far away, but the actual black hole would be quite visible. But honestly, I think just by looking at that globular cluster, it's kind of difficult to actually really get a grasp of how big this thing is. So instead, we're going to go back to our own solar system. Here's Earth. You're somewhere on this planet. I don't really know where. I don't even know where I am, to be honest. Um, but I think this is Antarctica and this, this is probably Australia. So what we're going to do is let's build this thing right here in our own solar system. But we're going to pick one of the farthest objects to do so, just so that you can get an idea of how big this thing really is. And you can obviously try this yourself using the Space Engine, absolutely free, because it is an absolutely free simulation. So what is one of the farthest objects you know in our own solar system? And you know, it used to be Pluto um, for the longest time. We didn't really know if anything else existed beyond Pluto, but then we started discovering new things. The farthest right now is an object known as Far Far Out, uh, for the lack of a better name, because it is pretty far. Uh, but unfortunately, this object has not really been added to Space Engine yet. But we do have another really far away object known as Sedna. And I believe Sedna is going to be, what is it going to say here? Okay, distance is about 543 astronomical units. That's, that's perfect. It's really far. 543 AU is 543 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. It's almost impossible to see this object from here. It's somewhere over there. You need a really, really powerful telescope to try to see it. Even at this distance, uh, it's barely even a pixel. In uh, kilometers, I think this would be just over 80 billion kilometers away from us. So let's change this into M87 and take a look at what we get as a result, just to get a grasp of that thing in terms of size. So once again, we're going to go into the settings and this time I think I'm going to actually modify this and change it into a star of type X, which is the spectrum for black holes. As you can see, Sedna has now become a black hole, um, although it's probably very difficult to read because the letters are really small. And now we're going to start increasing its mass. And so just let's watch and see what happens. So there is that massive black hole that suddenly appeared in front of us. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think we can give it more radius in terms of the actual accretion disk because it doesn't really have an accretion disk. But in terms of the size, so this is kind of what you get. This is um, the black hole at a distance of just over 500 AU or just over 80 billion kilometers. And uh, I guess it's kind of hard to see it because it is a black hole after all. But I think uh, because the way that the simulation works right now, it still has Sedna's orbit and also Sedna's parameters. The um, actual black hole is going to behave just like Sedna did. So it's going to move across the night skies instead of actually absorbing everything and destroying our solar system. So here, if I were to accelerate time, which I'm going to do right now by going, going to this location here, um, you'll see that eventually it's going to start moving across across the night skies. And there you go, look at that. We also get all these cool effects like Einstein ring and so on. And we're going to place it right there, right in front of the Milky Way, because that's the easiest location for us to see it. This is essentially what you would see if it was at this distance. It would be the tremendously large ultramassive black hole with the event horizon that's right there, um, approximately 133 AU in radius, and also extremely large gravitational lensing effects, uh, very large Einstein ring, and potentially a lot of other effects that would allow us to bend the light that comes really close to it and thus see really, really far away because it's so massive. Although obviously at this distance, um, you would probably not really want to be next to this black hole. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening here that are going to most likely destroy a beautiful planet Earth and 
make it uh, not just uninhabitable, but possibly not exist at all. So on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this particular simulation. I just wanted to give you some tools that will allow you to try this by yourself, turn something um, really cool into this black hole. And essentially to do this, all you need to do is bring up the mass to the max and also change the uh, parameters for this object to be um, a sun with X spectrum, because that's the spectrum for black holes. And then you get this. And um, in Space Engine, there's a lot of other tricks you can do to turn things into other objects, like for example, neutron stars. I'll let you discover this by yourself, but just to give you a hint, there's also a way to turn this into a wormhole. And this is something I've done in one of the previous videos where I changed a black hole into a wormhole and it did have very different effects. Something that um, was very, very interesting. And I'll let you watch the video if you want to see it. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. In one of the future videos, we'll talk a little bit more about M87, especially as we discover more things about it, because honestly, that's probably one of the biggest discoveries of the last few decades. On that note, thank you for watching. Check out some of the other videos on the black hole that I've made previously and come back tomorrow to learn something else and possibly something you didn't know before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.